Today on the Guild Family Stream, we have Father James Maudsley talking about his book, If You Believe Moses, Volume 1 and 2. Volume 2 has been banned from Amazon because it was talking about too many controversial topics. So that's where we're going to touch on all those controversial topics that Amazon doesn't want you to talk about on the Guild Family Stream. Thank you for coming back, Father James Mosley, to talk about your books. We just recorded about the Torah. Uh, Father Mosley, welcome back to Meaning of Catholic. Thank you, Tim. We're talking about, if you believe Moses now, volume one and two. Uh, these texts are just incredible. I'm so glad you, you delved into this. Uh, you've described this particular aspect as a mine that you want to explode uh for the good of the church in in terms of that that's how you clear a minefield i, I thought that analogy was great when you described it to me you clear a minefield by uh controlled detonation controlled detonation exactly so so this text um as i said it, it's been banned from amazon but you can you can purchase it on lulu i believe uh mm -hmm. now they didn't they didn't ban your other books from amazon right you're still okay so they <laughs> They haven't put a target on your back yet, but uh, perhaps that's coming. I don't know. But this is why, as Catholics, we need to um, support these alternative ways to get the information out there so we can really get into all these topics because uh, the powers that be don't want us to deal with them. So it, so what we're going to do is we're going to release the first 10, 15 minutes of this to the public where I'm going to ask Father Mosley some of the, some of the questions that uh, are going to be out there. Uh, I don't know if you've gotten any sort of hit pieces out there yet that uh, the sort of things that people go after E. Michael Jones about, but I just want to touch on the most controversial public areas, Father Mosley, and then we'll get into the, the things that YouTube won't even allow us to talk about in the private part. So if you want the full uh, uncensored version, everything we're going to talk about, you have to go to meaningofcatholic.com slash register get a part, be a part of the guild to get all the, the Jewish question we have. Um, I think it's upwards of 20 parts now on the Jewish question, going through all different aspects of it, uh, going into all the, the, the parts that we can't talk about publicly that, uh, there's no YouTube won't let us. So this is just, I'm really glad to have father Mosley add his voice to this particular question. Um, so father Mosley, for uh, my first question for you to kind of get this out of the way is um did amazon give you did they say well you're an anti-semite or or what did they say or can you address the objection the most common objection basically that gets thrown around everywhere is that this is anti-semitic are you an anti-semite father Mosley? what what do you say to that no i'm not although it's very hard to know what the term means they, I, I love the Jews um, that happen to be in prison, even for the sake of Abraham and Moses, that anyone who honors them, I love them. Um, now, even if I know there are Jews who do not honor them, but that they're, they're, they're called to do that. St. Paul talks to them, they admit they're enemies for the sake of the gospel, but beloved for the sake of the fathers. And we, we want their conversion, don't want them to go to hell. Hell is so awful. You meditate on hell for a bit. You, you realize you don't want to go there. And you don't want anyone to go there. But so many are. So many are. And if we fall silent because we're afraid of being called anti-Semite, which is absurd. You know, the Arabs and the Arameans and some Ethiopians are Semites as well. And yet anti-Semite is supposed to apply only to Jews. What, what they mean is any criticism of them, you'll be called an anti-Semite. And that's many people fall quiet, but that's not love. Um, and we will, God will make us pay hell if we think we can just fall silent. As we, we see what um, Israel uncriticized, what they're doing to Gaza, they will do everywhere. They, they're using America to do it as they used Britain and France before. Um, so, and it ruins our cultures. So we need, we need to be clear that the, there's only one covenant. It's new and eternal. The old is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. 
and there are rabbis who are almost ready to hear this um a, an old french rabbi talking about jesus needs to have a retrial and he means we need to acknowledge that was a mistrial it was illegal what happened to jesus in so many ways and you cannot fault him for anything this is amazing that a rabbi should be starting this movement um who is so, this movement rabbi you're talking about uh, he's very elderly i think he's french i'm afraid i can't recall his name and he did say some of the things which clearly show he doesn't get it yet you know mm -hmm. so we can even without knowing his name pray for his conversion um but everything's possible, you know. That's what we want, and it's worth paying a price. So Amazon didn't give me a reason for banning it. I, I wrote to them, appealed, said, why is this? Um, I, very quickly, they just wrote back and said, no, it, it violates our guidelines, whatever. I have no idea what it is. It's not a total surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it, it falling silent isn't going to help the situation. Yeah, it, it does seem that there's the powers that be have certain algorithms that, detect certain words that cannot be discussed and it, I, i'm i'm assuming that so because the same thing happened to my un i had an unlisted video with e michael jones that was nevertheless uh even though it was unlisted youtube still figured out what was said and then they they gave me a strike on that so i i don't know they probably have like an algorithm that if you say like the h word which we'll discuss later the h word and, and and the j word and all the different words and you say enough of them probably adds up and then we'll just kill it but let, let me ask you this father mosley because you mentioned this to me do you think that some catholics out there do have a problem with hating the jews yes although i've only really come into contact with people electronically who, who have not met or seen their face they, they'll email me or put comments on youtube and i assumed they were catholic because they watch my videos whatever but as i reflect actually I, I have no reason to think they are catholic but when they'll say, there's a desperation by some people to say jews don't even exist so there's two theories for this one they'll, they'll tell you that jesus is not jewish they say mary's not jewish because of the immaculate conception this is totally theologically retarded, as if in the Immaculate Conception, Mary was, even the matter of her body was a new creation, but she took her body from her mother and her father, St. Anne and Joachim. Um, so she inherits the Jewishness from them. Mary is Jewish, and her, she didn't inherit original sin from them. She was preserved from that. That's the miracle of grace. Jesus is Jewish because he's the king of the Jews. He's the Lion of Judah. He's definitely Jewish, as are his apostles. And so the, the crazy arguments I've heard that, that there are no Jews today. They're all supposed to be the descendants of the Ashkenazi, whatever, you know, Central Asian conversion by a king who was being threatened by Muslims on one side, Christians on the other. And whichever side he chose, the other would kill his people. So he decides to become Jewish to kind of split the difference. And whether or not this happened, there must have been many other Jews in different parts of the world at that time. They didn't all die out. Of the, I think it's people's obsession with the biology, which is the big problem of Judaism. They think we're sons of Abraham, so we've got it made. We're the chosen people. And Jesus told them that, that doesn't, that's not true. And St. Paul as well about the true sons of Abraham, the true Israelites, and the true Jew are those in spirit, with the circumcised heart, with faith, with hope and charity. But if you fall into your enemy's trap and you start to get obsessed about race and biology, then they, they're trying to say, oh, there are no Jews, there are no descendants of Abraham. That's not a solution. The solution is that we love our enemy and look forward with hope to their conversion how can they convert in the end if they don't even exist and it, it, i think it's a kind of a, a failure to examine one's own conscience how much one has sinned and to know the forgiveness of god which just blows you away he has forgiven you after when you confess your sins that's so glorious that to think there's people out there who have sinned like one of the, uh, was it St. John Chrysostom saying that 
God is ready to forgive even the crucifixion for all those who repented. He can forgive if we ask for forgiveness. So no one should imagine that someone is too far gone for forgiveness or that we know who they are. There are sins against the Holy Spirit which preclude forgiveness. And God can decide with the soul, right, you've, you've had it. You've bridged too far. You're not going to get the graces now to, to convert. Um, but that God knows that. We don't know that. So as long as someone's breathing, we should be hoping for their conversion. Yeah. We don't want anyone that we see to go to hell. Or... Yeah. As, as you said um, recently with Fonday Radio, God God took the sort of the <clears throat> a proxy crucifier, uh, a murderer of Christ in 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 the body of Christ, St. Paul. And he and Christ himself said, why do you persecute me? And he took a persecutor and a murderer of Christians and made him St. Paul. I, I love what you say. This is um, volume two, page 13. You say that no effort to oppose evil can succeed except it be based on self-sacrifice and include love of one's enemy. Because the fact is, if if you're a Christian and you hate anyone, St. John says, you don't even love God. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer, period. So you're just not a Christian, period. You're not acting like a Christian. You're betraying Christ by hating your brother, whoever he is, whether he's a Jew or Mohammedan or whoever, whoever, even if someone's doing you evil and you're not loving your enemy, you are forsaking the name of Christian. Yeah, and it's it's very dangerous because what you, you do then in hatred is use the methods of deceit or injustice to overcome your enemy. But in fact, thereby you're just feeding the beast. You're building up the city of man, bringing on the Antichrist through deceit and cruelty. Um, but whenever, you know, charity never harms. You just can't go wrong. If And it's beyond our strength, perhaps, to have charity. But if we ask God, he will give it as the martyrs who, the martyrs is, you know, those martyrs who prayed for their persecutors. But there's also martyrs who, who mocked their persecutors. So it doesn't preclude, like the Maccabean martyrs, you know, they ripped strips of uh, Antiochus, whatever his name was. Yeah. And it's brilliant. So it doesn't mean that we're supposed to be wet blankets and just take every insult and assault on the church and kind of be indifferent to the offenses against our Blessed Lady and our Lord. We should robustly counter that, but we have to do it in, in, with truth, right? And with the hope that you can, even if your enemy isn't going to convert, you need to do it so you don't lose your own soul and it strengthens other people. Other people who might be scandalized by these attacks on the church, if they see that shepherds, the hierarchy, defending the honor of God and Our Lady, and the Catholic teaching, it strengthens them. So it's right to be robust in defense of the truth, but not with not with a, a hatred. And I think the reason the, the, the accusation of anti-Semitism is thrown out there so much is frankly, it's a projection from people who think they're a superior race and who look down on the Goyim, and they think that we must think the same way. But it's it's not so in the, in the life of Christ. See how Jesus treated those who crucified him, or Saint Stephen treated those who stoned him. It's out of this world. It can only be done by grace. Yeah, and, that, and that's gets what I love. How you began the whole treatment of the Jewish question with Volume One, where you just talk about the reconciliation between brothers, and that is where the heart of Christ is in loving his own elder brothers who crucified him and the uh, the Jews today and all Jews and all people and loving even the enemy. So I think that's a, that's such a perfect foundation. So I, I think that gets at some of the basic things we wanted to cover publicly. Next portion is where we will discuss the bigger, uh, bigger in a sense, in, a, in some sense, smaller in another sense, um, the explosive topics, all the mines. We're going to try to explode all the mines uh, when we come back. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.